Welcome back. Today I'd like to talk about topic two in our unit on space. And we're going to deal with the idea of a sun-centered versus an earth-centered model of the solar system. Now, if, if you remember from our first topic, most people earlier on thought that the sky was rotating around and around and around us. And if you took sort of time-lapse photography, you'd notice that the stars seem to be spinning or moving. Or as this person is showing with a stick, uh, a star one day will be in a different location in the next day, which gave us sort of the idea early on that maybe it was the sky that was moving and not the earth, which led us to our first model of our solar system, which is something called the geocentric model or earth-centered model. So earth was the center and everything else revolved and rotated around the earth including the moon, Venus, the sun and Aristotle 2000 years ago proposed this. The sun, moon and other planets moved around the earth in uh, spherical motion. However, The geocentric model had some faults to it. For example, why did Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn sometimes seem to loop backwards in the sky if the Earth was at the center? Um, so a gentleman named Ptolemy proposed that this was the result of what planets sometimes make in that small epicycles, which means even though they go around the Earth like this, every so often they'll do a little spin or an epicycle or a loop. Um, so here's Ptolemy's improvement to the geocentric model, Aristotle's model. So Ptolemy said, yeah, Earth is still at the center and Aristotle is right. The planets do these little epicycles and so here's what it looks like again. Earth, the sun, and all the closest planets go around. And then Ptolemy said they're going to do these epicycles. However, Copernicus, in 1950, a Polish astronomer, proposed that that wasn't the case at all and that the real model that we needed to consider was something called the heliocentric model. Now the heliocentric model puts the sun, or our sun, at the center with all the planets revolving around the sun. And of course here's number nine, Pluto, which we think is now a dwarf planet. And so let's look at that for a minute. So here's Copernicus' sun-centered model, sun at the middle now, and the planets go around the sun. And he adopted Ptolemy's idea, though, that the reason that sometimes the, the planets seem to go backwards in the sky was still due to epicycles. So things got better in regards to the way we now know the model of the universe as, as history goes on. Uh, and our next important gentleman is Kepler, and Kepler will even improve on this idea and find out that, or basically explain that Ptolemy's epicycles aren't really what happened. But first, let's watch this clip from YouTube about the geocentric versus the heliocentric uh, model of this, the universe.
you ever wondered what is beyond planet Earth? Our solar system. People have known about it since 200 BCE. Their idea of the solar system was very different from ours, because it put the Earth in the middle, not the Sun. This theory was discovered by a man named Ptolemy. years, his theory of outer space satisfied people. Because it explained what they saw every night. Each night they saw stars and planets in one position and one place per night. Every night the stars stayed in their position but changed places in the sky. While the planets changed places. Uh, so let's keep going about how that all works. Uh, so we still have to deal with this whole idea of epicycles and the fact that it just seemed a little far-fetched. And so Kepler discovered and came up with an idea called retrograde motion, which means that planets do appear to go backwards in the sky and the reason has to do with the following. If this is our sun, which it is, he realized, Kepler, that the sun isn't at the center. And the second thing he realized is the path that planets follow around the sun is not circular. It's what we call elliptical. So those two ideas or principles help to explain uh, what Ptolemy could not explain. And so let's look more at retrograde motion. So one of Kepler's first laws is that the sun is at slightly off center and a planet travels in an ellipse around the Sun. Now, here's the planet. What we know about gravity is the following. As the planet goes in this elliptical orbit, it gets closer to the Sun at certain points in its orbit and farther away from the Sun at other points. Now, thanks to the pull of gravity, what that's going to do is, as the planet gets close to the sun, the pull of gravity, think of this as being on a string, slingshots the planet and causes it to travel at a faster speed as it's in sort of this zone here. Its motion in its orbit is at a faster speed than when it's farther out and it will travel now at a slower speed through its orbit. And so let's look at this again. That said, or because of that, because, so let's say this is the sun here, and this represents a planet going this way. The other thing he noticed through geometry and math was this area and this area were the same. So if they were, the region around here and the region around here were also equal, 10 months. Well, how could that be? The only way that can be is 
if the Earth or some planet around the Sun is traveling faster here and slower here. That would be the only way to explain how this was true. And so here this shows you when a planet is farther away in its orbit from the Sun, it moves slowly, and when it is closer, it moves quickly. So the two areas, here and here, will still be the same. Let's see if we can apply this principle. So here's a elapsed time. Here's the sun. Here's the elliptical orbit of this purple planet. It travels like this. And here's the shaded region. And then here it is again. What can we say about the... Uh, if the first picture represents the area swept out during a time A, so this is time A here, and time B is here, you'll notice it's closer to the sun, so it's going to go fast, even though this is a longer distance, and it's farther from the sun, so it's going to go slow. What do we know about the relationship between A and B. Well, we know the two areas in red are equal. So what about the time A? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, so many days, and time B. Well, they're going to be equal according to what Kepler's saying. Even though this is a longer distance and this is a shorter, the planet's moving slower here and faster here. And how does this all fit into things? Well, because of this phenomenon, Sometimes Earth will pass Mars in its orbit and Mars will be appearing to go backwards in the sky. So Copernicus, or sorry, Kepler's two laws where the Sun is not at the center of the ellipse but farther to one side, the planets travel in an ellipse and when they go around the ellipse, they travel slower when they're farther away and faster when they're closer helps explain this phenomenon of retrograde motion in the sky, which means, as I said before, it appears that in the sky, sometimes Mars is going backwards from our perspective on Earth. So there's an explanation of topic two.